Kunchka. Thanks, Nick. Very robust. What are you? Pavo 35, eh? Interesting. What is this? What the hell is this? Oh, that's dangerous. guys heads here from infinity loops and long time no see welcome back today we are taking a look at the beta fpv pavo 35 cinema now before i begin i feel i should mention that this was sent to me by beta fpv as a review quad so i did not purchase this uh, however the trust that you put in this channel to give you accurate reviews on things whether they be good or bad is much more valuable to us than any amount of affiliate code usage will ever be. So just know that I'm going to give you my opinion on this quad and Beta FPV has no input whatsoever in my opinion. Let's get into the Pavo 35. Firstly, we can start with the name, the 35 meaning 3.5 or 3.5 inch propellers. This is also a 6S Cinewhoop, so a bit foreign of a battery to us tiny whoopers, but we will make do for today. Now the version I have is Express LRS, but they do have other receiver options on the website. Also, this does not come with a VTX or camera in it. This is kind of built out so that when you receive it, you can just put in whatever uh, video system you're using. So if you're using Walk Snail, DJI, HD0, Analog, you can just plop the VTX in, plop your favorite camera in, and then send it. It has everything else ready to go. Now in our version today, we're going to be flying it with Walk Snail as our video system. Thank you to Nick Burns. I now have a nice pair of Goggles X and uh, the latency is beautiful. I can fly walk snail with no issues like I was getting uh, while I was using the VRX. We're also going to be utilizing this little action camera mount that it comes with. Uh, I 3D printed a adapter for this to work with my CADX peanut. So we'll try a ultralight action camera on it. And then we'll also try a full sized GoPro 7 on here. So you can see how it'll perform when you got a little extra weight on the nose. According to Beta FPV's own website, this quad here has a nine to four to one trust to weight ratio. And I trust these numbers are accurate and hopefully you'll be able to have enough trust to carry the GoPro camera on here. Now, before we get into some flight footage, I just quickly want to take you for a tour around the quad and let you know about some of the hardware you're going to get with it uh, that comes on the plug and play outside of obviously the VTX and camera you need to supply. So we'll start with the flight controller. You can just barely see it there below the battery strap. This is a F722 35 amp all-in-one flight controller by Beta FPV. As mentioned, we are running Express LRS and you can see our receiver hidden back here in the back of the build that is sitting in a injection molded, not 3D printed mount uh, that also holds your VTX antenna as well as the ELRS antenna. Keeps them all nice and snug back here. Uh, it's very sturdy, like I said, not 3D printed, so uh, it is very robust. While we are back here, we can take a quick look at the booty, and this is where your Cobb light strip will plug in to the flight controller, and then that runs all the way around the frame and glues back, right back where it started. So uh, this thing is insanely bright at night. Mine is blue, and you will see as I'm flying around, you can even sometimes see it in the reflection of where I'm flying. You kind of see like the snow is it has a blue hue to it or uh, the wall I'm flying in front of has like a blue light glowing off of it. That is the Cobb light strip that you are seeing. If we flip to the underbelly here, you can kind of get a better look at the 2006 24,000 kV motors that it comes with. It is also spinning these tri-blade 3.5 inch gem fan props. Uh, and lastly, your XT60 plug is fixed to the frame right here in the nose, just behind your action camera mount. While we're looking at that action camera mount, I can also mention that it does have the 
it seems to be the new style for these Cinewhoops is doing these floating uh, camera platforms here. So your action camera and your FPV camera both are floating suspended on these little rubber grommets. Beta FPV has recommended that you fly this on a 6S 1050 to 1400 milliamp battery, I believe. I'm going to be flying it on the 1100 milliamp lava battery that they sent for me to try with this. Now in this review today, we're going to be looking at a lot of flight footage. Not a long amount of it, but a lot. Uh, I'm going to cut them short to keep it brief, but the quad when I originally received it uh, had a bit of an issue with the flight controller, the way that they mounted it. The grommet was rolled up slightly, uh, just wasn't seated properly. So anytime I tried to do anything on the pitch access, the quad would just freak out and I started getting flyaways eventually. <laughs> Um, turns out wasn't the tune. It was just a little grommet found it on stream one night Reseated the flight controller took it out the next day All the flyaway issues were gone. So I'll include the footage of the flyaway just because it's funny. I, I had walk snail and a GoPro on the front and just swan dived right into the snow uh, Fixed the issue that night and then got it back in the air the next day um, Oh, you know what? All right there that grommet right there the clear one is squished and crooked but you can't only see it there's crooked on the bottom you on are the top this quad from zero to hero this looks like it's good work. but down here you see the the grommets all squished and cockeyed i didn't notice that before it's underneath but anyhow that's enough out of me let's go take a look at some flights on the pavo 35.
average, I was getting around six to eight minutes of uh, flight time with no action camera and just going balls to the wall uh, and just really trying to rip this thing up. If I slowed it down and went a little cruisier, I could get around 10 to 11 minutes of flight time. And I mean, that was really just kind of cruising straight lines, typical Cinewoop behavior. Once I slapped the GoPro 7 on the front, mind you, that is a heavy camera, uh, flying with that, I believe I was getting around eight minutes. And when I switched to the peanut, I was getting around 10 minutes again. So overall with a light camera, you can easily do 10 minutes of cruising shots with this on an 1100 milliamp 6S battery. Now, as you saw, this will freestyle. This can Matty flip, this can power loop, this can trippy spin, you can wall tap with it. And it even has these little nubs on the plastic part of the frame that keep it so that you don't slam your motors in when you do a wall tap. Now I wouldn't buy this specifically to freestyle with, but if I wanted a Cinewoop that I could also pop the camera off of and just go freestyle and it was pretty nimble, it's not a bad choice. Let's do a very traditional pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. Number one, top of the list, the cob light strip. I mean, that's just a given. Also a pro is the ability to just take off these four bolts here and this whole plate comes off and that's where you mount your VTX and that also gives you pretty good access to that side of your flight controller, which you're gonna need if you need to solder your VTX wires onto the flight controller. The ring around the outside, as thin as it is, it is very strong. Uh, this took several crashes into the pavement. This took smacks up underneath my truck. This took smacks into the side of the house. I slammed it into stop signs to do wall taps with it. Uh, this thing took a beating and uh, so far I haven't cracked it. I haven't fractured it. Uh, nothing is loose. Everything is still got some give to it, which is good. You don't want it super stiff, um, but it's also still pretty stiff you know it feels it feels strong still also under the pros i'll throw the floating camera platform in there i know it's just kind of typical now of cine whoops to have but i think it's neat uh, and the last pro i would say is the trust to weight ratio i think they're right it was it was pretty good so i'm glad we trusted beta fpv's decision on that uh, i think they made the right call now on to the negatives there's not many number one the factory tune that this comes with is not the best. Uh, Beta FPV historically has always had okay tunes that they send with their bind and flies. Uh, they're never particularly sharp, maybe just not for my style of flight. Maybe they work great for you and that's fine. Uh, just for me, they've always just felt a little off, like they were really close, but just not quite there. Uh, that is the case with this as well. The stock tune felt a bit off to me. It comes with two profiles, one for with a GoPro, one without. Uh, and both, I just couldn't get it to feel very good. Uh, after a little time spent with Brandon, I, I know now that it is not. The hardware that this comes with, it was simply just some settings in Betaflight. After making a few changes, all of the things that were bugging me before in the tune started to go away. So uh, it seems it just needs a nice clean tune on it, and then uh, you can do a little more than just flying in straight lines, cine whooping with it. And if you're just looking to do straight cine whooping with it though, I think the factory tune should be just fine. Next con for me is going to be right up here at the action camera in the front. I'll include a nice close-up picture so you can see. If you have a full-size GoPro on here, uh, I just want you to imagine your GoPro is on here and we're going to match the angle of our FPV camera. So our GoPro will be tilted maybe about here uh, and your 6S battery is going to come up to about here and you need to plug your 6S battery into here, which is going to be between your action camera, which is tilted backwards, and your battery, which is 6S and huge. So trying to get it plugged in was almost impossible for me. The way I was doing it was I was plugging the battery in and then putting it into the strap. There was really no other way for me to plug in the battery without having to like, take the camera off, I guess, or slide it forward plug the battery in, slide it back, tighten the bolt back up. Either way, it was a pain in the butt. I, I like that this is flush mounted. I don't know, I guess they could have probably put it at the back side of the frame and just moved where they mounted the, the RX. Uh, that was, that's probably my biggest gripe with this entire thing is just the location of the XT60 plug is, is not ideal for when you're running an action camera. Now, with all the pros and cons out of the way, the only thing left really to talk about is the price. Beta FPV has this listed on their website with no VTX or camera at $249.99.
Now, is that too much for a Cinewhoop with no VTX and camera on it? 6S? I don't think so. Uh, I feel like most Cinewhoops are, are in that price range, maybe a little lower uh, with no VTX, but I can't imagine by much. Now, that'll do it for my opinion, but how about yours? Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Pavo 35. 250 a little steep? Do you think there's anything they could change or improve on this? Maybe things they could get rid of or add to make it better? Let me know down below. I'm sure Beta FPV would like to hear from you too. Finally, I want to give a big thank you to Beta FPV for sending over this review quad and allowing us a chance to give our honest opinion on it. I also would like to thank Brandon's Baked Beans for his black box tuning. I do appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much. And finally, thank you for watching this video. I'll leave a link down below where you can pick up one of these yourself if you are interested. Full disclosure, that will be an affiliate link. It does help out the channel if you buy one with it. Take care of yourselves, and we will see you in the next one. Later. Ooh -oh.